Hey guys, welcome to chapter seven of the private label tutorial 30 part series. In this video, I'm gonna be telling you exactly where you're gonna start your private label journey, exactly where you're gonna be looking, and I'm gonna give you tips and tricks that are gonna fast track your success in finding your first product to sell on the Amazon platform. Without further ado, let's get straight into it. Okay guys, without further ado, let's get straight into Blackbox, uh, search for products using Blackbox. So you're gonna find Blackbox using uh, the tools function within Helium 10. You're gonna find it under the product research section there. So once we're in black box, you want to make sure you're selected the USA, or if you're looking to source your products and sell in another country, you can select whichever country that you want, but 95% of you are going to be picking uh, Amazon US. So make sure we pick that. Now we're going to pick the categories of product that we want. Now, these categories are purely based on my personal preference. You can change these and you know you can go with whatever categories that you want, but I'm picking these for a reason. I like these categories and I think that there's ample opportunities within these categories. So I love baby products. I like beauty and personal care. I like health and household as a niche. I like home and kitchen. I like kitchen and dining for the same reason. No one ever likes this, but I like musical instruments as well. I think we can find some niche stuff in there. I love office products. I like pet supplies. I like sports and outdoors, and I like toys and games. So those are the categories that I would suggest that you start looking into initially. As always, as I said, you know, feel free to, to flex that a little bit as, as you kind of go on. Now, let's get into the hardcore metrics and, and things that we look for. So review count, we want a max review count of 250. Review rating, we want a max review rating of four. Reason being that review count, we want under 250 so that we can actually get into a niche that's making decent money that doesn't have too much competition, that isn't too saturated. And a review rating maximum of four means that we can find a niche where you know there's issues with it and customers aren't happy with specific aspects of it, which we can come in and improve. There's no point targeting niches that have you know review ratings of five stars because that means the customer is completely satisfied. There's not any room for improvement there. Now, shipping size, we want to make sure we pick small and small standard size and large standard size, and we want our weight to be between zero and three pounds. Now, you might have heard me say this before if you listen to our podcast, but I love products that can fit in your microwave oven. So if you have a product that can fit in your microwave oven, chances are it's you know within uh, smaller dimensions and it also is a, a lower weight, meaning that you know it fits in your microwave oven. So that's a, a perfect cliche, but micro if it fits in your microwave oven, you're probably onto something good as long as obviously the other metrics um, stand in good stead as well. Fulfillment wise, we want to do FBA and FBM. We never want to select Amazon because we never want to compete directly with Amazon on any of the products that we look at. Now, number of images and variation count. So I love products that have a maximum number of images of four. Now, if a product has a maximum number of images of four, it means that they're missing out on five slots. So Amazon gives you seven slots on your main image. And then when you click into the images, you get a further two that pop up for a total of nine. Now, a lot of people are doing well on Amazon with only four images. That shows me that the listing has not been fully optimized and that there's room for us to come in and improve on it. So I love that. So I, I, I actively seek out products that have a maximum of four images. The other thing is variation count, right? So I want you guys to go ahead and launch product on Amazon, single SKU, one variation. That's going to be the easiest thing to do. It's going to be the easiest thing to scale. You can add variations uh, and different kind of SKUs down the line. Now, same goes for your competitors. If you think about it, you only want to be competing against people that only have one variation you don't want to be competing against a guy who's got 20 different variations of the product because it gives customers more choice. And people that have multiple variations and multiple SKUs of the same product generally are not first-time Amazon sellers. They're more mature sellers who kind of know a thing or two about business. So to put yourself in the best stead and to give yourself the best chance on Amazon, I recommend that you go for products that only have a variation count of one. That's really where you want to be looking. Now, the only other things we need to add are the price and the monthly revenue. So Price-wise, I know this changes over time and there's a bunch of different gurus out there that say different things. I mean, I came into the game selling products $20 and up. That changed to $30, but now I'm sitting at around $40. So I love products priced between $40 and $150. If you're just starting out, you've got limited capital, you're probably going to be nearer to the $40 mark than the $150. But I found that that is a decent range to actually start looking for products. And then monthly revenue, the only thing I'd suggest here and that you know is my hard and fast rule is that you want to be looking for products that make minimum ten thousand dollars a month in revenue. If we're looking at an average of a twenty-five to thirty percent profit margin, you know that would leave you bringing home around two and a half thousand to three thousand dollars. So really, you know that for a lot of people is 
you know, what they earn a month it, from the salaries. A lot of people is slightly under. So that is a minimum we want to target. Once you start bringing that monthly revenue number down, you start getting into the weeds of things and it doesn't really make sense. One thing I say to all the students that we have in the Accelerator 2.0 program is it takes the same amount of effort to find a product that does $5,000 a month as it does to find a product that does $10,000 a month. So you might as well aim high and go for the product that's going to bring in the uh, most monthly revenue. So bear that in mind, guys. Cool. Okay, so we've got all of our criteria put in. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to search this. So let's hit search. Now Helium 10 scouring Amazon's catalog is bringing me back all of the products that fit into the criteria of you know what I'm looking for. So 161 results have come back. These are all of the products. I'm going to run through these products. I'm going to show you products that I like. I'm going to show you products that I don't necessarily like. So a lot of these you're going to see are brand names. So we've got Yu-Gi-Oh, for example, a lot of health and household. These are going to be sort of your supplements, etc. And you know you don't really want to go up against brand names. You don't really want to go up against supplements. So let's jump in and see if anything isn't a supplement, if anything isn't a massive brand name that we can potentially explore. So I'm going to keep looking through here, see if I can see anything, guys. Okay, so we've got a digital dishwasher thermometer. That could be pretty good. So I'd, I'd want to look into that. I'd want to see what kind of numbers that's doing. I'd want to see what the search volume demand is on that. So we can see it's doing $28,000 a month in revenue. It's only got 96 reviews and those are four star reviews. So there's potential uh, for us to explore that and look at what customers aren't you know, liking about that product. So I do like that large standard size, of course. So it would be relatively cheap to ship that off, which wouldn't eat into our margins, which I really like. We've got a red light therapy gum light that is doing $12,000 a month in revenue, 3.6 out of five stars. So there's clear issues with it. Only got 14 reviews, already doing 12,000. Price is 69.99, so I like that relatively small light product. So I'd also wanna look into that and maybe shortlist it, dive into it a bit more. And then I'll look for one more for us guys. trying to avoid big brands here. I can see a lot of big brands, a lot of uh, supplements are coming through because I've selected the health and household niche. So going forward, if you see this coming up a lot of the time, guys, I would suggest to uh, deselect the health and household niche so you can see some of uh, some of the other products coming through. But here we've got a Lady Kegel Exerciser that is priced at $129. It has 115 reviews, a star rating of 3.7, which isn't that great, but it's doing 36,000 uh, and a half, thirty-six and a half thousand dollars in revenue. So that is a lot of revenue, guys. Uh, looks relatively small. It is electronical, which I don't always go for. But if I find a good product and it is electronical, and I think I can make it better, it's not going to be something that puts me off. It's not a massive red flag for me, so I'll still dive into it. So I'd also shortlist this one and dive into that. But guys, I hope you found it helpful. That was Helium 10's uh, black box, really easy tool. You can see the reason why I suggest it to be the kind of first port of call when you start selling on Amazon or start looking for you know, product opportunities on Amazon, because you can just put in your criteria, you know, you don't have to do a lot of the manual labor, a lot of the hard sort of work going through different categories, which we're going to go into later on in this video. But you can quickly find products that fit the bill with the criteria we're looking at. And then you can then go into them, dive into them a little bit more, check out the keywords, check out the metrics that sit behind them, and make a decision based off that. So this would be my first point of call. So exhaust the Helium 10's black box before you start looking at other ways of finding products on Amazon. Hope you enjoyed. Area number two on our product research journey of where we should start is gonna be on the amazon.com website. And I want you to go into the categories in the departments that Amazon suggests, and I want you to niche down. So go down into the subcategories and sub niches, and then go further into the third level of subcategory and sub niche. And there you're gonna find a host of products that you wouldn't have already seen from going through things like new releases, bestsellers, and other areas of the Amazon website. So what do I mean? What am I talking about? I'm gonna show you, let's get into it. Once you're on the Amazon website, you want to be able to search by department and really go into the sub sub niches. So I'm going to come over here and click on all, and then I'm going to click on shop by department. So I'm going to go down to, let's pick pet supplies, for example. So I'm going to pet supplies. I'm going to go into dog supplies. So I'm in dog supplies. You can see under dog supplies, there's so many different subcategories. So 
I'm going to go into, why don't I go into, um, let's go feeding and watering supplies. Pets is such a huge niche as well. People spend so much money on their pets and there's a massive, 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 massive waft of products uh, and massive demand on Amazon for, for pet stuff. So you can see I'm in dog feeding and watering supplies, which is a sub niche of dog supplies. But then within that, I can go down a bit further, right? So I can go down into uh, dog bowls and dishes, for example. And when you're at this level, you can start seeing things that you don't necessarily see on the Amazon homepage or even in new releases or any of the other ways in which you search for products because this is really the bottom of the funnel. So I've just realized, actually, there is another, another level. So let's go down into travel bowls, for example within bowls and dishes. So you want to keep going down into these subcategories until you can't go down any further. So you see now I'm on dog travel bowls. I can't go down any further. And that's exactly where I want it to be. So we've got dog travel bag for supplies. A lot of reviews, but a good price point of $40. Before I forget, actually, we want to put in our minimum $40 here. So we can exclude everything else. Okay, so we have uh, a dog travel bag, drop bottom weekend away backpack for medium and large dogs. So a dog backpack, that looks pretty cool. We've got this mobile dog gear, a low number of reviews, good price point about $40. I like these, a really, really key way you can differentiate these. This guy's got the red first aid kits. This guy's gone with the gray. This guy's one is kind of blue, kind of looks like it's waterproofed. So there's so many different ways in which you could differentiate these products. This one comes with a mat and the raised bowls. These ones come with different containers, a uh, side for the water bottle, different subsections of the pack or the bag. So a lot of stuff you can do here when it comes to travel stuff for dogs, travel um, bowls, travel bags for dogs. So I'd go into here. I'd particularly be interested in looking at the revenue these products bring in. And I'd then start looking at the keywords. So you know how much search demand is there for dog travel bag bundle? or dog travel bag. So I look into that. And if I see anything that look good, I'd shortlist it and then do further due diligence on the margins and start reaching out to suppliers. So as you can see, guys, if you once you go down into the very bottom of the funnel, the sub, 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 sub categories, you're going to start finding products that are going to be easier to fit the criteria that you're looking for to launch on Amazon. Once you've exhausted the categories and sub niches within Amazon's department section, you want to get into the best sellers, new releases and movers and shakers. These are lists of the top 100 of each of those categories. It's updated hourly, and we can find some more products within those sections once we scour through. So let's get into that. Okay, so we're on Amazon.com. Now we're going to check out the new releases section. So let's go straight to there. So we're in new releases, and then we want to pick a subcategory. So let's pick uh, Home and Kitchen. So now we are in the home and kitchen section in the new releases. And then I'm going to pick uh, one of these. So why don't I pick, for example, uh, let's go home decor. So these are all the new releases within home decor. And I'm going to start looking through these and look for specific criteria of what I want to see. So I want to see products that are priced at $40 and up. And I want to see products that have either a low number of reviews under 250 or no reviews at all. So if a product has no reviews and it's make it's, it's on this list, essentially it's doing really well with no reviews and I really like that. And I hope to replicate that level of success. So let's just look through these and I'll jump at anything that sort of catches my eye. So we can see here, we've got these kids art frames, picture display for A4 art, they're $59.99, don't have any reviews on page one. So that's something I'd dive into. So I'd shortlist that. And then just going through, you also have this waterproof, washable, tip-proof, durable, open tote bag for the beach. That looks like a cool, unique design. It's priced at $52.99. There's no reviews for that product, but it's on the new releases list. So I like that as well. I'd short list that. And I go into the keywords of that to validate them to see if there's any potential opportunities there. It's coming down. There's a lot of St. Patrick stuff, so I'd avoid anything that's super trendy like that. And just coming down... I can see there's a Patrick's Day artificial wreath, but I might be interested in just the wreath without the Patrick's Day. So I'd look into the wreath keywords, artificial wreaths, and see if there's any anything there. 
And then just going on to page number two. A lot of products that aren't meeting sort of our price criteria here. Okay, so this is pretty near, right? So clear backpack, heavy duty, thick PVC transparent backpack with leather trim, large capacity to see through backpack. Thirty five ninety nine, so close to our forty dollar mark. Uh, it's only got two reviews, and it's on the new releases list. So I'd click into that as well, and that would be something I'd explore. So already you can see on the new releases list, I found three products that we'd want to explore and get into. It can be super helpful using this. You can also go ahead and do the same thing for, for example, the best sellers list. The only issue here is going to be a lot of these products are going to have a lot of reviews, so you've got to be careful. So if we go into Home and Kitchen here. And then we go into uh, home decor. A lot of these products are going to have a insane amount of reviews. So take it with a pinch of salt, this niche, go for products that have under 10,000 reviews and products that have price points above $40. So you want to go through here and, and shortlist anything that fits that criteria. What you're then going to do is take the specific keyword from that product and then search for it on the Amazon catalog. So you do a new search for that product and then start validating potential product ideas within um, you know, those keyword phrases. And then the other thing I mentioned is the movers and shakers. So much like new releases and bestsellers, movers and shakers shows you either products that have jumped um, in their ranking or have, you know, done really badly and, you know, maybe haven't, uh, had, have kind of dropped off the ranking. So we can see movers and shakers, both movers and shakers from each department. So let's do the same thing again. So let's go into home and kitchen and we'll go into, um, Home and kitchen as a subset and then start looking through here, right? So again, a lot of crazy reviews. Some aren't too crazy. So we'll, we'll look into the ones that aren't too, too insane and start sort of looking from there. So, you know, we've got this neck pillow for traveling. Different price range. I'd want to identify which side of the price range this product's at. Maybe it depends on the bundle or the size of the product, but I'd look into that. That's interesting. There could be, if there's other products within a niche that have under 250 reviews that are making at least $10,000 in revenue, that would be something that I'd look into a little bit more and could potentially be a product opportunity that I'd look to launch. And then just coming down here, we've got these space heaters for indoor use. Again, we've got that price range there. A lot of reviews on this one, but again, if I can take the keywords and find something which is interesting, uh, that is, has under 250 reviews, it is doing a decent amount of revenue. That could be a potential product opportunity that I'd look into as well. So that's that's it, guys. So we got movers and shakers, we did bestsellers, and we did new releases. So these are great areas to look into to actually find products to sell on Amazon. These are updated hourly. So if you ever go through these and you get disheartened because you don't find anything, just wait an hour, check back, and you're going to find a bunch more products. So I hope you guys found that useful. That was bestsellers, new releases, and movers and shakers. Another thing I love to do when it comes to looking for products on Amazon.com is to type in a super broad search term and then look at what products come up in the search results and see if I can find anything that further niches down into a specific area that's an offshoot of the broad category which I'm searching for. So what am I talking about? What does that mean? Let's get into it. So using broad search terms to niche down and find a specific product niche is a great way to find products on Amazon as well. So let's type in a specific term on Amazon that's quite broad. Keyword phrase is pretty broad, uh, and let's dive into that. So why don't we go children's toys aged, uh, let's do three to five. Super broad term, which is going to throw off a bunch of new products that potentially we can get into. And then the next thing I want to do is put my minimum uh, price range in. So I wanted to find products at minimum $40. So I'm going to hit $40 and go. And what that does is it gets rid of all the stuff that's like super cheap that I don't want to be looking at because I'm not even interested in that stuff. So I don't, I don't even want to see that stuff. Okay, so let's go through. So first off the bat, I've got these kids walkie talkies. So uh, price is $59.99. It's pretty decent. Uh, these are pretty easy to replicate. So I'd shortlist that. That's something I'd probably look into. The review count isn't too crazy as well. It's already like that. We've got another one here. Looks to be a variation. So we've got some spy secret agent walkie talkie. Uh, you know, that's 23 reviews. It's got a really poor rating of three stars and it's 44.99. So that looks good to me. I'd look into that. 
Next, we've got this dance mat toy for three plus year old girls. So we're going into a niche where, you know, we've put in a super broad term and it's thrown up a bunch of different stuff. So kids toys three to five is so broad. There's so many different ways we could look at this. So this is throwing up all the new products that we're going to then shortlist and get into. So dance mat looks good. We've got this slot car toy vehicle race set. That looks pretty good as well. So I jump into that. Just going down here. Again, I'm looking for things that aren't too big that, you know, can fit into uh, our microwave oven. So what we want to do is we don't, we don't want to go for products that are too big that fall into the kind of uh, small oversized section. We want to look for things that, you know, we, we can probably shift uh, within our microwave oven or within the large standard size dimensions. So we've got this light tracing up pad. I know that number of review count there is pretty big, but sorry, that's a brand name as well. So we, we actually would ignore that one. We've got these magnetic tiles building block set. I know that's been pretty hot. I've seen that crop up a bunch of times in black box. So that's 4.8 stars, only 34 reviews, 47.99. I think I could do a better image than that. And I think I could probably improve this set. So that would be something I'd shortlist and look into as well. We've got a robot for kids. Now that looks like it could be a little bit too big and it's electronical. So I probably would stay away from that. But 49.99, 256 reviews, 4.3 stars. So definitely points to improve on that. So that again is a potential. But as you can see, guys, there's so many potentials here and I haven't even gone into doing the due diligence and really looking to each of these products. But you can see already by typing in a super broad keyword search term, I can find products within that broad search term that fit specific niches that then I can take away shortlist and look into look into the revenue, look into the differentiation points, look into how much it costs on that, uh, Alibaba to buy it, etc. So I can kind of base my product research journey there and I can find so many things. This has quickly become my new favorite way of searching for products is literally typing in a broad search term and then diving down into the niche. And I call it sort of going down the rabbit hole. So the more rabbit holes you go down, the quicker you're going to be able to find products and you're going to find products that people aren't going to find because you're looking off Helium 10, you're looking off the all of the kind of typical ways of finding products on Amazon. And you're going to be able to find products that no one else is looking at, which is going to mean that you have less competition. It's basically going to mean that you make more money. So check that out, guys. Broad search terms down into super specific niche terms. Number five takes me to a website called Etsy. A lot of you might be familiar with it. It's a website where there's a lot of handmade stuff. There's a lot of smaller niche stuff. Now, I found a bunch of good products by searching on Etsy and then taking those keywords to Amazon to validate them and actually finding out that they're pretty good. There's a decent search demand. So I'm going to show you how you can use Etsy to find products to sell on Amazon. Next, guys, we have Etsy and I love Etsy. Some of the products I sell at the moment I originally found on Etsy. It's really, really good for niche based products. A lot of the products on Etsy are handmade. So you can find products here that have significant demand. You can check the number of sales on Etsy, and then you can take those keywords that you find on Etsy and bring them over to Amazon and validate any products there. So what I love to do on Etsy is type in a super broad term. So again, we're going to go with a broad term, and then we're going to dive into uh, specific products that come off the back of that. So let's go children's toys and search for that. Obviously, a bunch of stuff is going to come up. What I then like to do is to look at products which are more expensive so typically on etsy how it works is uh, products are really expensive on etsy but then the price on amazon is always a lot less so what i like to do is look for products that are at least a hundred dollars on etsy because then i know once i bring them to amazon they're typically going to be above that kind of 40 dollar mark don't ask me why etsy just seems to be slightly inflated compared to amazon so what i want to do here is i want to go on the price point and i want to go for products that are over a hundred dollars and I'm going to hit apply. Just like Amazon, Etsy has a review rating, a star rating, etc. as well. So it can be really, really good as well. So, okay, a couple of things. So we've got this wooden balance beam and stepping stones. I'd look at that. You know, I'd take those keywords, wooden balance beam, stepping stones, and search them on Amazon. They could be pretty good. We've got these Montessori busy boards. A lot of reviews there. Obviously, that one looks like it's doing really well. A little bit concerned with the size there. It might be creeping into the small oversize um, size tier, but I definitely want to search those keywords. So toddler busy board, baby, and Montessori board. I'd take those and search those on Amazon. Those are pretty good. A lot of these other products looking really, really big, so I'd, I'd avoid them. We've got this one here, toy wooden building blocks. It's 129 on Etsy, so I know it's probably going to be around the $60, $70, $80 mark on Amazon. Again, depending on how many units you have in this set, they might be too big. They might fall into the small oversize. So you want to check that. But this would be something I'd search on Amazon. 
We've got the Montessori toy shelf. Again, that looks kind of big, but definitely something I'd search. The vegetable set, play food vegetables, looks pretty cool. $125, that would fit into the small standard size. I don't know how much they sell for on Amazon. This is a felt-based product, so you know it's compactable. Maybe you could vacuum pack that, so that, that would work. Um, I'd want to search on Amazon as well. We've got this screw board construction set. Again, that looks pretty small. I know for sure that's large standard size. So I'd want to get into that as well. Wooden tool set looks good. Marble tree looks good. We've got the stepping stones again. We've got magnetic weekly planner for kids. I mean, this looks good as well. So as you can see, there's a bunch of stuff, guys, on Etsy that we, we can find very quickly. You can see this is just page one of the results. There's many, many pages. Go into here, shortlist keywords, and then take those keywords to Amazon to validate them and see if they're any good. Number six is something no one really ever talks about. I haven't heard anyone talk about this on the YouTube platform, but it's eBay deals. This is another area where I found potential products to sell on Amazon, potential private label ideas. I've then taken that information to Amazon to validate using Helium 10. And not always, but sometimes I found some decent juice that has then led me to pursue a product opportunity or a product idea. So let's go over how you can use eBay deals to find products to sell on Amazon. And the final way in which I love to find products, potential products to sell on Amazon is to head over to eBay and go to the deal section. So I don't hear a lot of people talking about this. It's something that I've done recently and it's been very successful. I found potential products I can launch on the Amazon platform. So I love to go to sections like home and garden. And let's say, for example, going to kitchen, dining and bar. And then I look for products that are, you know, in the eBay deals and I'll take specific keywords, exactly kind of what I did with Etsy. I'll take specific keywords and I'll take them and throw them into Amazon. So this one looks good, right? So cast iron lid holder. You know, I didn't know such a thing existed. I'd take that keyword, I'd search on Amazon. Again, I'm looking for products that are a little bit more on the premium side. I'm avoiding knives. I'm avoiding things that are heavy. I'm avoiding things that can break. I'm, you know, really going for things that can fit into my microwave oven. It's kind of where I want to be at. So anything through here that would catch my eye, I'd jump in, take the keywords, make a short list of five to 10 keywords, and then take that to Amazon and then validate that on Amazon. So just so I can show you something else, I know I've been heavily focused on home and kitchen. Let's go towards pet supplies, for example. And we did pet supplies just now. Let's do it again. So we've got orthopedic memory foam bed, and that's a little bit on the cheaper side. We have an incubator for chicks. That looks cool. We've got cat trees. Again, you've got to watch the size on those. Could be creeping into small oversize. You want to be careful there. Pet dog grooming table. Looks good, but again, depending on the size, we've got the pet grooming uh, blow dryer. That looks really cool. We've got pet strollers, but those look like they could be a little bit too big. Dog play pens, but again, those look like they could be small oversized and they look pretty cheap to be honest. A little bit more tricky here in terms of the price point, but you get the gist of it. There's a bunch of stuff and a bunch of keywords that we can take from here. We can exhaust all of these categories, just like how we exhaust the Amazon categories. Search the keywords on Amazon, and we can do the due diligence to check if any of those potential products have a good chance of being a great opportunity to sell on Amazon. So that's eBay deals, guys, and I really recommend you utilize this as well. So guys, that's it. I hope you found that useful. Those are all the ways in which you should start your private label product research journey on Amazon. Now that list isn't exhaustive. There's many other ways I didn't touch on, such as going out to brick and mortar or retail stores and actually looking for products there. But that list should give you enough juice to get started and start finding products that make at least $10,000 a month in revenue with under 250 reviews. So without further ado, get out there and start looking for those products.